All right, now that we've talked about how to calculate our equilibrium constants, I, I'd like to talk about some of the algebraic ways we can manipulate them. Um, given what we're doing with the chemical reactions. Uh, and there's like three ways that I'm gonna show you of how we can manipulate K so that way we can get information, uh, take information from one reaction and learn about another. Um, and so, uh, well, well, I don't anticipate we'll use these a ton, it's important to walk through. So first um, we can, um, use an equilibrium constant to find another equilibrium constant if a reaction is just being reversed. So when the direction of an equation is reversed, the, the new equilibrium constant is just going to be the inverse of the original. So it, it, and you can see this just in how you formulate K, that if my reactants become my products, right? So my AB comes here and my products become my reactants, like I just flip my perspective on this, then my equilibrium constant just flips, like it becomes the inverse. And so we can set up this relationship um, oops, right here, where if I am going to be looking at one reaction um, and I flip it and consider my products now my reactants, I just take the inverse of my K value. Here's an example. Um, so if I'm looking at hydrogen and nitrogen combining to form ammonium, then I would have an equilibrium constant that would have my product over my reactants, right? Uh, and it'll produce a value that is uh, pretty big. It's 4.26 times 10 to the eighth. Now, if I look at the reverse reaction, let's say I start with ammonium instead and form hydrogen and nitrogen, then I'm going to have that hydrogen and nitrogen on the top of my expression because they're the products. And remember, like what I set as the reactants in the products is, is relative to what I'm doing in the lab. Um, and so, it won't be like making things up each time. Like I just, if I wanna know what the equilibrium constant would be, and I know the value for the hydrogen and nitrogen combining to form ammonium, I go, oh, well, it's just gonna be the opposite. So I take one over the value um, right here, and I get this very small number, 2.35 times 10 to the negative nine. And I can back this up experimentally by looking at experimental equilibrium concentrations for both versions of this reaction, one starting from hydrogen and nitrogen and the other starting from ammonium. And I'll get a K value that the inverse matches the opposite reaction. So if let's say that the place you use this is let's say you're interested in performing your reaction in the lab and you need to know some information about it. Like, am I gonna be able to form enough products? Um, and so you can look up equilibrium constants, maybe in a paper that someone's published that's already looked at a reaction, but they're not looking at the exact reaction you're looking at. They're looking at the opposite. We can just take their equilibrium constant they're reporting and take the inverse and use it to predict how many of the products you're gonna be able to form. So it's really useful. It's, it's always nice when we can actually take someone else's information and data about something that isn't exactly what we're doing and use it for what we're doing and build off of it instead of reinventing the wheel. All right, another way to manipulate K is by combining reactions. Um, so in this case, when um, the coefficients of an equation are multiplied by a factor, um, sorry, not combining, that's the next one. Um, when we uh, multiply it by a factor, then we're going to just raise all our equilibrium constant to a power equal to that factor. So if I was looking at A plus B forming C and D, and I really am gonna be performing some sort of reaction where I'll have three A plus three B forms three C plus three D. And my guess is that this would be a situation where we're combining with something else. We'll have multiple processes going on and we would have uh, three times as much of this reaction happening as well one time of another reaction is happening at the same time. Um, what we can do is say, oh, well, that would essentially add these coefficients into our equilibrium expression, right? That's the only difference is we're changing the exponent. And so if I'm raising everything to the third power, I can really just instead take the K expression from the original without the exponents of three and, 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 and raise that to the third power and use that three as an exponent. Here's an example. Uh, using our ammonium equation, hydrogen and nitrogen again. Um, so if I multiply everything by three, I take this um, Kc value or K value for my reaction that I'm starting with. And if everything's multiplied by three, I'll be coming in and changing this exponent of two to a six, my exponent of three to a nine and my exponent of one to a three. And plugging that all in, I'm gonna get a Kc value that is 
cubed of the one we just looked at. Let me calculate it really quick. I'm going to get a value that's huge. It's 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 25th. All right, let's look at the third one. So this is when we combine the equations. All right, so here I've got chemical uh, reactions that are in equilibrium for a couple of different, for two different reactions. And I'm combining them. I'm saying, well, let's combine these. And when I combine them, I can actually get rid of my intermediates. So just like what we were doing with validating reaction mechanisms. So I actually can get rid of this C value here, right? And I'll have A plus B plus E forms D plus F plus G for my products. And so I can combine these two expressions right here. And, and that essentially, that's this combination right here. That gets me exactly what my, like the same equilibrium constant is if I made it up for just the two reactions already combined. And so I can see that my equilibrium constant for my new expression is really just going to be multiplying the two reactions that made it up into that one. I'm sorry, that didn't sound right. Um, the two reactions that I have that I have equilibrium constants for, I can multiply them to get my new reaction, which is a combination of the two. And so we'll just take the product. Here is another example. It's a little different. It's not ammonium this time. But if I, I take two reactions, my NO2 forming NO3 and NO, and uh, my NO3 plus CO forms NO2 plus CO2. So I, I can get rid of this NO3, right? Um, and I can even get rid of one of my NO2s. Um, because they'll cancel out when I combine these to form this overall reaction right here. And so if I had information about the equilibrium constants for both of the two reactions that make up this third one, rather than measuring equilibrium constants and doing an experiment to find that equilibrium constant for my new reaction, I can just take the product of the two. And so I'll combine these two. I get an expression that looks like this, and I can just calculate it by multiplying the two together.